Hi guys. For the last time in the year 2022, I can say it is a spectacularly gorgeous summer evening. <coughs> a summer evening here in the collapse of global industrial civilization. It is the last day of the summer of 2022 here at Bugs in a Jar Farm. <coughs> Good Lord. Uh, anyway, I'm sure we'll have some recaps of that, but uh, what am I going to do for the final uh, <laughs> rant of the summer of 2022? Guys, I am uh, just going to do it with, with no trace of irony. I am tipping my hat to that doomer extraordinaire Antonio Guterres, the Secretary General of the United Nations. I don't know where this dude came from. I guess he came from Portugal. I don't know what his trip is. I don't know what he thinks he's going to accomplish by, you know, making any doomer down here in the doomosphere, you know, sound like a piker. We have, uh, here in 2022, for whatever reason, we have the Secretary General of the United Nations sounding exactly like Collapse Chronicles or any of the others. And uh, hallelujah. Uh, I, as I say, I don't know what his real agenda is. I don't particularly care, I guess. But uh, I, I finally just have to say good for you, Antonio. Now, of course, Antonio Guterres uh, is... He, he, the guy is obviously a doomer, okay? The, the guy knows we're doomed. He knows the the state of this planet as well as anybody down here in the doomosphere. He knows damn well there, there's not a damn thing that anybody, starting with the United Nations, who, who is as guilty as any group on this planet for getting this planet in the mess they're in is going to do a damn thing to turn this freight train around. He knows it damn well. Uh, but, but obviously he has to keep pulling out, you know, to keep his job. Uh, I, I guess he has to keep pulling out these little bullshit, uh, you know, getting out his team of bloodhounds in, a, in an electron microscope to find these little subatomic particles of uh, hopium and uh, apocaloptimism. Uh, the guy's not fooling me for a damn minute anymore. And I, I honestly don't know, does this dude write his own speeches? Or does he have some doomer speech writer? And but whoever, you, you know, hallelujah, brother. That speech that he gave yesterday at the 77th, I guess it was, General Assembly, something like the state of the world, uh, and, and, and it's a damn good recap. Uh, now, I encourage you to go on and, and listen to the full 25-minute speech and, you know, try to ignore that, you know, that little... Uh, flag waving from the UN and that hopium crap. Uh, but anyway, I highly encourage you, just go listen to the old Doomer himself. But if you want uh, to listen to me rant about him and cheer him on, uh, I want to thank uh, good old Yahoo News, the, the number two story on the planet today. Now, of course, the number one story on the planet is that little irritating little gnat that little uh, planet-eating war criminal over there in Russia, uh, you know, over there chest-beating and the, all, all of this. I get so, in, anyway, don't get me going on that little war criminal. So, of course, they had to give him top billing, but uh, slapping that little irritating gnat aside, let's listen to how Good old Yahoo News, Ben Adler. I like this dude, Ben Adler, the senior editor 
He is now a senior editor at Yahoo News. Ben is a good guy. Okay, he, he clearly understands uh, how doomed we are. Uh, so uh, take it away, mainstream media. And this is Ben's, uh, how his spin on it. And then we might look at another story or two at the end of this. But uh, anyway, take it away, Ben Adler. UN chief warns of, quote, a winter of global discontent. Exactly what we're heading into. United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres warned that war, famine, and climate change are setting the stage for, quote, a winter of global discontent, close quote, in his remarks opening the UN General Assembly on Tuesday morning, speaking to a crowd that included heads of state, many of whom will address the General Assembly this week. Guterres warned that these and other ills, including global inflation and growing economic inequality, pose acute challenges <coughs> demanding swift action. Yes, but he went on to express frustration that nations are hesitant to meet the moment. Yes, do you think so? I guess that little war criminal, that irritating gnat little war criminal over there in Russia, is, I don't think he's attending this at all. Uh, I'm pretty sure he's sitting this one out, and I guess that Joe Biden decided to sit out the climate change. You know, I guess they were meeting today about some big climate change meeting the day after uh, Antonio Guterres talking about how all of these world leaders were putting climate change on the back burner. And uh, Joe Biden, the Save the President Joe, the Save the Planet President Joe Biden decided he had more important things to do. Anyway, so let's hear some of the choice plum quotes from uh, Antonio Guterres. Quote, We are in rough seas. A winter of global discontent is on the horizon. A cost of living crisis is raging. Trust, you know, in groups like the United Nations, for instance, Trust is crumbling, inequalities are exploding, our planet is burning, people are hurting with the most vulnerable suffering the most. Yes, the United Nations Charter and the ideals it represents are in jeopardy. We have a duty to act. And yet, we are gridlocked in colossal global dysfunction. Yes, we are. You tell them, Antonio. We are gridlocked in colossal global dysfunction. The international community is not ready or willing to tackle the big dramatic challenges of our age. These crises threaten the very future of humanity and the fate of our planet. Crises like the war in Ukraine and the multiplication of conflicts around the globe, crises like the climate emergency and biodiversity loss Yes, close quote. Um, I'm just going to try to mostly quote from Guterres uh, in this part, and then we'll come back to some other comments. <clears throat> I have just returned from Pakistan, where I looked through a window into the future. A future of permanent and ubiquitous climate chaos on an unimaginable scale. 
devastating loss of life, enormous human suffering, and massive damage to infrastructure and livelihoods. What is happening in Pakistan demonstrates the sheer inadequacy of the global response to the climate crisis and the betrayal and injustice at the heart of it. Close quote. Uh, on Tuesday, Guterres broadened his focus to include other ills, such as, quote, social media platforms, huh? based on a business model that monetizes outrage, anger, and negativity, hate speech, in misinformation, and abuse. Hmm. Targeted especially at women and vulnerable groups. Yes. Close quote. But he returned to climate change with a heavy focus on that subject in specific policy prescriptions, including on including calling on developed countries to tax windfall profits of fossil fuel companies with the proceeds directed to the poorest communities suffering the consequences of climate change. Yes. <clears throat> anyway, getting back to... Um, he was the, you know, calling out policy makers who have put climate change on, quote, the back burner, you know, the, the day before... Uh, Joe Biden, you know, put it on the back burner. Anyway, getting back to Antonio, quote, the climate crisis is the defining issue of our time. We have a rendezvous with climate disaster. I recently saw it with my own eyes in Pakistan where one-third of the country is submerged by a monsoon on steroids. We see it everywhere. Planet Earth is a victim of scorched Earth policies. The past year has brought us Europe's worst heat wave since the Middle Ages. Mega drought in China, the United States, and beyond. Famine stalking the Horn of Africa, one million species at risk of extinction, no region is untouched, and we ain't seen nothing yet. <coughs> there you go. We ain't seen nothing yet. <coughs> Yes, uh, let's see, <coughs> skipping, I, again, I'm just trying to, you, you can go, you need to go and hear the whole 26 minutes, I'm skipping over a lot of what Ben uh, has to say and sticking with Antonio, all right, quote, the G20, you know, the 20 biggest governments on the planet. Maybe it's that little, uh, that little irritating little gnat war criminal over there in Russia. Maybe it's the G20 meeting that he's either sitting out or not invited to. Anyway, back to uh, Antonio, quote, the G20 emits 80 percent of all greenhouse gas emissions. But the poorest and most vulnerable, those who contributed least to this crisis, are bearing its most brutal impacts. Meanwhile, the fossil fuel industry is feasting on hundreds of billions of dollars in subsidies and windfall profits, while household budgets shrink and our planet burns. Excellencies, let's 
tell it like it is. Our world is addicted to fossil fuels. It is time for an intervention. I think it was <coughs> George Bush who beat him. To, oh, that was our world is addicted to oil. Uh, <coughs> yes, there we go. He also called for nations to agree to a new framework for protecting biodiversity and for the G20 to provide funding for sustainable development and debt relief in the least developed countries. And uh, guys, I don't need to go off on a rant about the UN Sustainable Development Goals, which are the biggest joke, the UN Sustainable Development Goals and the UN Biodiversity uh, Protection Goals, uh, not to mention, for that matter, the Paris Climate Goals are a joke. Across the board, they are toothless, unenforceable, greenwashing, uh, bright green lies. It's a bunch of crap. It's unadulterated horseshit. Every single one of them. Every single one of them is, is, is a bright green lie. It, 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 just, just talking is just talking shit. That means nothing. There is not one thing that the United Nations is doing to uh, to tackle uh, the problems that their own Secretary General is talking about. Antonio Guterres knows damn well that the United Nations uh, is a laughing stock. A, you've got uh, the conspirators on one side. Uh, laughing at them. You have the doomers and the eco-Nazis on the other side laughing at them. Uh, so, G Guterres, he, he fully understands how doomed we are, and, and he fully understands that everything that the, that the UN is uh, claiming it's doing to save the planet is a sick, twisted joke that is going to do nothing except kick the problem and can down the road a little bit. He knows damn well that everybody from this irritating little uh, war criminal over there in Russia, everybody uh, from that uh, spineless little chicken shit uh, over to Joe Biden down to uh, higher Bozo Nero, uh, he, he knows damn well uh, that is business as usual on this planet, and it's time for him to come out and say it. Anyway. Okay, here we go. Many G20 leaders, including President Biden, will speak at the UN this week, but one head of state will be notably absent Russian President Vladimir Putin, whose invasion of Ukraine has been widely condemned internationally, is skipping the General Assembly. Uh, Biden will speak on Wednesday. He's a day late because he just returned from Queen Elizabeth's funeral. Yes. Okay. So wrap it up here. Guterres, I loved it. We we're going to close with this. And, and, and congratulations to Ben Adler for not, uh, you know, reporting on all, all of this, this hopium crap that you hear in the full speech. This is as close that as Ben Adler will get to, uh, to the hopium. Quote, We know lofty ideals must be made real in people's lives. So let's develop common solutions to common problems. Close code. I'm not sure what's going on in the state of the world in 2022 
is a common problem. The collapse of a planet. Is the collapse of a planet a common problem with common solutions? Antonio Guterres knows damn well what the problem is. The problem is humans. And he knows damn well what the common solution to the common problem of humans is the common solution to get rid of the humans and make planet Earth a human exclusion zone. But anyway, uh, <clears throat> good old AP did a uh, pretty good analysis which they titled UN Chief Speaking to Leaders Does Not Mince words. He sounded a global alarm warning leaders about the survival of humanity and the planet in language that was sometimes downright undiplomatic. He called out those he blames for the perilous state of the world. It was Antonio Guterres's strongest most striking speech since he took the helm of the UN in 2017. And if you were the leader of a country, it was clear he wanted your undivided attention. Yes. What was noticeable about his State of the World speech Tuesday was its no-nonsense language its gloomy tone and its focus not only on the breadth of challenges confronting what he called the splintering world. Yes. His language was especially blunt when he lashed out at the growing divides in the world saying as we already heard, the international community is not ready or willing to tackle the big dramatic challenges of our age. And of course, uh, the United Nations is one of the members of the international community which is not ready or willing to tackle the big dramatic challenges of our age any more than anybody else but at least uh, they, they have a doomer uh, spelling it out. Uh, anyway, uh, <laughs> they just go through, uh, y y you know, the usual list of suspects that he took to task, self-absorbed governments, social media platforms. Uh, he even went after artificial intelli intelligence. Uh, he went, uh, of course, the group of 20. Uh, he went after, as we know, the fossil fuel industry. Uh, he went after rich developed countries Yes, polluters must pay, uh-huh, and Guterres said, unusually stark language for the world's most prominent diplomat. Yes, uh, and then they actually, you know, looked at his speech last year and uh, compared it to this year, you, you know, how much more of a doomer uh, Antonio Guterres. Uh, you know, last year he was talking about, quote, the greatest cascade of crises in our lifetime, close quote. I think I remember uh, that one. Then, of course, that was before uh, the, that little uh, kerfuffle over there in uh, Ukraine. Uh, his warning this year is even more alarming. Our world is in peril and paralyzed. We have a duty to act, and yet we are gridlocked. 
in colossal global dysfunction. Yes. David Sheffer, a former U.S. ambassador at large for war crimes issues, said the 2022 version of Guterres is, quote, a truth teller for a world that has reached a point where either we are surviving or we are going to perish. It is the most consequential speech by a Secretary General in the history of the United Nations, said Sheffer, who's a senior fellow at the Council on Foreign Relations. Quote, he set out not only the crises of our time, but he sent out a clarion call to ensure the survival of both humanity and of the planet. Um, <clears throat> Sheffer said Guterres abandoned the niceties of diplomacy and predicted that his speech will become known as the survival address. Quote, he basically said, wake up, and he was not ambiguous about it. Yes. Uh, no leader, he said, can ignore or challenge, quote, anything that the Secretary General said today without being regarding, regarded as an irrelevant leader at this time in history. Uh, and let's see, one more. Let's hear from Richard Gowan, the UN Director of the International Crisis Group. Quote, I do think he feels it is urgent to speak as frankly as possible. His overarching goal was clearly to try to confront world leaders with the poor state of international cooperation and threats to the planet. I thought he did that pretty effectively, but he has made similarly dire warnings in the past with little real impact on international relations. Do you think so? Uh, you know, the, the, the more and more dire Antonio Guterres gets, the more and more international uncooperation. Gowan um, of the International Crisis Group said he thought it was a, quote, gloomy speech, but he allowed that Guterres, quote, has a lot to be gloomy about. <laughs> Do you think so? Uh, do you have a lot to be gloomy about, little dog? So anyway, uh, it is a gorgeous twilight over the summer of 2022. I am going to go have my last margarita of the summer of 2022, and uh, I'm going to toast the end of my 62nd year on the planet, and... Uh, I will wake up an old man of 63 years old tomorrow as the fall of 2022 begins. Get out there and enjoy the waning hours of summer twilight 2022 while you still can. And let's see what the fall of 2022 brings before our winter of global discontent cranks up in a couple of months. Bye guys.